This NBA draft profits edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold hard cash with their over under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group, and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. And make sure to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Hey, this is John Sally, and you listen to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, Sean, we are not here to talk about NFL football or fantasy football. We're here We're to here talk to- about why Colby <laughs> went long in the studio. Well, <laughs> we should probably discuss that at another time. Air Force 2.0. Air Force 2.0. More important. Than us talking about <laughs> NBA draft. Price. No, we are here to talk about the National Basketball Association. Let's go. Draft is tomorrow. Tons of action to get down on. Hey, get down a little NBA uh, draft. Head over to winbet.com or fantasy football experience. That's right. Every $500 you bet on sports or casino earns you an entry. For a chance to win a two night stay at the Wynn Resort for you and your entire league. That's pretty awesome. And again, of course, bet $50, get $200 in free bets. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com to get started today. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at WinBet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you or someone you know is a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Kramer. Joining us here to talk the National Basketball Association. You know him from the NBA Gambling Podcast, the Propcast, the MLB Gambling Podcast, so many podcasts on the SGPN network. Moodoff, the machine, Manji. Moodoff, what's happening, man? What on, guys? I'm gonna have a few words for uh, Colby after. Don't don't waste the machine's time. All right, that, that's one <laughs> the machine is a couple, couple of words for him. Colby <laughs> also uh, tried to <laughs> tell us that his computer kept telling him the wrong time. He was time traveling. <laughs> He goes, it's one hour off. The laptop's telling me the wrong number. So I don't know. There's a lot. We we may need to run an upgrade on the database. But you're just back from Switzerland. How was Switzerland, Munaf? Oh uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. A little I was talking when we were talking offline. It was a lot hotter than I expected. But um, no, it was a lot of fun. I'd highly recommend getting out there. Uh had to take over the NBA gambling podcast winnings from this past season. Open a Swiss <laughs> bank account over there. Let's go. Yeah, Got we that all taken care of. <laughs> we closed it out strong with uh, Game Six. I mean, so much touting, of course. Nailed the uh, Warriors in six. Warriors laying minus one and a half. Uh, nice end to the season there. Joining us as well from the NBA Gambling Pod, the WNBA Gambling Pod. There's a little bit of everything for SGPN. Scott Reichel, what's happening, Scott? No, yeah, nothing much. Nice to see you guys. I also filled in on the MLB podcast for yeah. an emergency, I believe, 3 a.m. recording, which was a nice time. So hopefully those plays work out. But even though I know we all crushed it on that game six show and the overall finals, it's nice to still find ways to cover the NBA even during the offseason. Yes, exactly. Any excuse to get more action, get more bets down. And uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. And for those, well, I mean, humble brag, but. Maybe the hardest working man in show business. There's, I, I mean, I feel like it's him and Moonoff going neck and neck uh, uh, here for, uh, you know, putting the, in work. The age model. Uh, might he took, he took a vacation though. <laughs> I mean, not took a vacation. I don't know if that disqualifies him from the running or not. But <laughs> the so. machine, the machine needed to unplug, recharge a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. we, we have to get ready for football season and before we know what NBA is going to be right back at. <laughs> Uh, before we get to our prop bets, we're going to go through our favorite uh, NBA draft prop bets. 
We have uh, this week's edition of Real Men of DJs, and it's brought to you by Sleeper. Head to sleeper.com slash SGP. Get in on their new over under game. You probably already have Sleeper for fantasy, but now you can get down on player props. You can win as much as 2x all the way up to 20x, simply picking over under for your favorite player stats. Sleeper.com slash SGP. You get the automatic match up to $100. 100% deposit match sleeper.com slash SGP terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. SGPN presents real men of D real men of D We salute you Scott rice shell. That's all right. Scott, you are this week's winner of real men of D and it's all because of this three team parlay <laughs> you put out. A $125 free bet to win $5,459.09. And the DGENS part is really what you put together. Warriors to win the championship, you got it plus 550. Eagles to beat the Jets all the way back on December 5th, lane six and a half. Gardner Minshew, no problem there. And then here comes the DGEN. New Mexico <laughs> at New Mexico State, New Mexico first half money line plus two sixty. Feels great. That yeah, was a real piece of art I I witnessed, uh, Scott. Now walk us walk us through. You got the free play. Um, I'm guessing you put this in and around November. Thirtieth. What what? Oh, That's correct. <laughs> because yeah. I, I'm imagining you enter Jersey <laughs> to bet on the NBA Coach of the Year award. Oh, <laughs> so putting in a couple of bets there on Steve Kerr and Monty Williams, and I was going to leave. And then I checked my account, and they tell me, "Oh, by the way, since you just showed up at Jersey to bet on the NBA Coach of the Year, here's a couple hundred bucks in free bets." <laughs> they so were that. And I, <laughs> we stopped off at a restaurant slash bar. And I sat at a table for maybe an hour, just constructing random parlays <laughs> to put in with the free bets. Oh. I didn't even have a computer. So it was all with my phone. Cause I wasn't expecting to have free bets to use. And then I somehow landed at that. So I ended up making uh, yeah, about five grand on that. I also had another free bet parlay, which had the Suns to win the West as my final leg. I hedged that I had the Mavericks in game seven. So I made an extra thousand or two there. So it was all because I got rewarded with an extra free bet because of a Jersey trip. You there know, you I, I don't want to like tease it too hard, but I, I would imagine Scott will be out in Vegas for week one NFL. Uh, I feel like we almost have to have a group parlay. Like the, yeah. the momentum is building like between a strain. Cause we'll have enough sports to be strange at that point. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I mean in the smile that Scott, if, if you're not watching <laughs> on youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, I just watched a eighth grade promotion <laughs> where kids yep. promote to, to to being in high school. Is there a problem with uh, the word graduate now? Is well, that problematic? I guess it's, well, you're not graduating. You're not getting anything. You're just going to ninth grade. Like congratulations, you're moving on. <laughs> sorry, sorry if I'm old school. Like your reward is ninth grade, not having to do eighth grade again. But the <laughs> smile on the parents' face, it very much. Remi- reminded me uh, all, of all of uh, you know, Scott considers all his parlays his children. I, I mean, that's what it looked like. He was a proud papa in that <laughs> moment, right there. All right, yep. let's let's get to the actual <laughs> draft prop bets. I know Scott. I know Moonoff. Uh, you guys talked. Uh, you've been hitting on them on the NBA show as well. Scott, while we're talking to you, kick it off. Uh, I think we'll each give out like four, but you know, whatever. Maybe we'll t- we'll t- toss some extra oh, ones always... in there. What's your uh, what's your uh, first NBA draft prop bet you like? So the first one is actually kind of timely because there was a trade today involving one of the teams. I think might take the guy. It's going to be Shade on Sharp, and I see his number at eight. Uh, you can find seven and a half for the under a plus money, but under eight's around minus one fifty five. Now, Jeremy Grant just got traded there, which kind of throws a wrinkle into things. But I found it interesting if you read between the lines that he canceled his workout with the Pelicans at the eighth pick. So there are some rumors that the Trailblazers might have had a somewhat unspoken agreement that if he is available at seven, Portland's going to take him. But if you want to go based on upside and based on talent, Sharp definitely seems to be 
a strong candidate to be the best player in the draft outside of the top three or four. Of course, he can play several positions, a very solid score. He would have played at Kentucky, but decided not to at the last minute. But I do find it interesting that the team that had a workout with him at eight, he canceled with. Usually that's a sign that there might be a little bit of an unspoken agreement there. And I know Lillard has been pushing pretty hard for the trailblazers to take him at seven. I like him under eight. Yeah, maybe. I'm quickly going inter- to, sorry to interrupt guys, but uh, kind of breaking news here. Chris Haynes of uh, Yahoo Sports. Uh, he's reporting Portland Trailblazers are in pursuit of uh, Toronto Raptors forward OG Ananobi for the seventh pick tomorrow. So want to throw Ooh. that out there. Okay. So yeah, that, that uh, changes everything. Shakes things yeah. up. Uh, Moodoff, you have your, uh, you have a mock draft up uh, over at uh, sports gambling podcast.com. Also click through the player list. Cause we have some actual legit uh, film breakdown on a bunch of these guys as well. Yeah. But Moonoff, what's your, uh, what's your first uh, NBA draft prop bet? Yeah, this one I locked in this morning, um, and, and it's really on the move here. And it's going to be uh, the Notre Dame guard, uh, uh, his draft position right now. It's uh, Blake Wesley, under 21 and a half. And from everything that I've read so far and all the you know respected mock drafts, I know a lot of people just throw out mock drafts out there, but a lot of them are projecting to go within that around that 18 to 20, 21 range between the Portland, sorry, the Minnesota Timberwolves or the San Antonio Spurs. Um, and again, I, I'm glad I like this up right now because I got it at even money on the under 21 and a half. And right now on some of the other books is moving towards minus 130, minus 140. Um, and it seems like a great fit for any of that, anybody in that range at minus or sorry, that 18 to 20 range between the Timberwolves and the uh, San Antonio Spurs, um, you know, Timberwolves, they can do some guard play off the bench. Patrick Beverly, we talked about him throughout the playoffs, how he's a guy that really is a defensive guy. They need some offense coming off the bench. I think he would be a good fit for Minnesota. So um, I'm taking the over, uh, sorry, the under 21 and a half on Blake, Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame at even money. Nice. Yeah. Even money is a good price to your point. I, I think it's, you got to lay more juice as it gets closer to uh, draft night here. Kramer, what do you got? What do you got? NBA uh, draft props. I'm t- I, like, is this? Are we starting with the ones we like the most, or are we just no, just just throwing? Follow your heart. All right. Well, I think it was what a week and a half ago when Malcolm and, and myself uh, we pointed to a suitcase of multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars that we just picked up, right? Yes. Free money in in the in the form of a horse race. Well, I I. Why are we? Let me let me ask the uh, the smart guys in the room. Is there a reason I wouldn't take the winnings from that and put it on Jabari Smith minus three eighty first pick? There's no. no reason you'd not. I mean, it's crazy. Like over the last two days or last three days, that number started coming down, and I was really confused on why. But I, that was another one that I did lock up at minus. I think it was our minus two thirty this morning. And now it's oh. all the way up to minus three eighty. So I'm not a value hog here, but I I'm the NBA is not like, I feel like you don't often have surprises uh, and not at number one too. I and, mean, and you know, maybe this is maybe the, maybe this isn't fun content for me to say, throw all your money on a minus three eighty favorite. Yeah. That's pretty Bush league. Right? But uh, well, I, I, where, where, why it's a minus a 10,000 who's <laughs> going there. No, I mean, maybe, it's already been determined. The maybe, top three picks have been determined. Maybe Banchero, I guess would be, I've the read only. the tea leaves. That would be the only even one Bill that Simmons think, doesn't have any like cockamamie plan. No, to, there isn't the <laughs> one, two, three, and even I'll bleep out his name later. Even uh, number four to some degree seems pretty much. No, uh, I think four is where the draft starts, right? Like, yeah, I, Kramer's yeah. right about that. So, all right, maybe the move is you find a place where you can just play the trifecta and you play Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren. And Paolo Bancaro. And if there's a way you can also play Chet Holmgren will be a horrible fucking bust in the NBA. Yeah. That that I want a piece of that. How long's his career last? Five years? I, I don't understand how soft. How Chet soft. is again, if I came here with no real prep on draft props, and I want to th- let everyone know. If you've not watched college basketball, that dude's fucking soft. If you yeah, you just watch <laughs> I, I just don't see how that guy's gonna compete. At an NBA level, and I—he wasn't the best player <laughs> on his team. I feel bad for uh, 
Uh, well, there, he's got they, long arm though. Long, long arm. I mean, sure. Oklahoma City as, as a franchise has been through so much, and then now they're gonna have to watch a seven footer <laughs> who's 195 pounds. I I just don't see it. I I get it. He can fill out not and round out his game, but man, he just doesn't seem like a guy who's you're, you're not who's gonna carry a franchise you're not at the excited. number two spot. I, I would. I would 100% take Jaden Ivy. I, <laughs> I watch I, those two dudes coming off the bus. <laughs> I I really like uh, I really like Jaden Ivy. I I don't think um, it does seem like he's probably going to go anyway. number four, but um, I, I don't know if there's a ton of value. That, that parlay would have to play pay around you know even money if not a little bit better. So oh, I do want to I do want to ask you guys a question though, since you're talking Ooh. about locks for the first couple of picks. What do you think is a bigger lock? You have Smith going first at around minus three eighty right now, or Holmgren going second somewhere in the minus two hundreds. I mean, I guess I just my feelings on Chet Holmgren it's make me believe to, that yeah. anyone could pass on him because I wouldn't want to take him. No, I, I, yeah, again, what, I, what are you talking yourself into? This is <laughs> Kevin Durant. No, no, Kevin Durant <laughs> dominated, and he played no. at a Big Twelve school. He wasn't in the, you know, the Pacific Conference or whatever. Chet Holmgren turns into one of the greatest players ever. All right, my first pick here. I really like, and I got this from Moonoff's mock draft. I got it from uh, a bunch of others. Right, I seems- just hold on, sorry. I found it in the wild. Plus one oh five. For the trifecta. Okay, then now we're talking. I mean, it, that's probably not. It feels the, the best way to play. But that that I, yeah. I you know again back up the truck. Um, my first one, give me uh, Jalen uh, Duran, uh, center out of Memphis, top ten pick. You can get that. Well, you can get his under ten and a half at plus one hundred five. Muno had a good write up here, and I I totally agree. I don't see him getting past the Spurs. He's a six foot eleven center. Uh, it, it's a classic like the prospect fits the team. They have that need. I think he's uh, top ten for sure. And now you can get it at, um, at at sorry at under ten and a half plus money. I don't know why this is changing. Scott, have you heard anything about Duran that would that would make you think this is a bad play? Well, to be honest, I was actually leaning to the over ten and a half. All right, God plays. damn it! Like, uh, you I'll, I'll go, go, go the, for I'll it. Go the logic. I'll go through the logic of why I th- I'm leaning over. It's because San Antonio does make sense at the nine pick. The problem is, do any other teams in the top ten have a shot at drafting him? Probably not. So, if you're looking at a situation where you can get over ten and a half, and you really need to fade one spot, you need to fade nine. I can't really see any other team in the top ten taking him. That I am going to lean to the over, or the argument itself would be a San Antonio might trade the piece. I'm sure there are going to be a bunch of trades in this round, or B San Antonio. Besides, they need a, besides the fact they need a center, they might just believe that there are a couple of can't miss prospects available, and they think that Duran is a decent center who has some upside, but maybe they're looking for a game breaker, and I, I don't think that Duran's going to be that guy. So I understand your point because San Antonio is definitely a solid option for him to go. But I'm not exactly sure if any other team besides San Antonio would take a shot with them. So as long as you get through the ninth pick, aren't you kind of home free? Yeah, I mean that's that's a good way to handicap it. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with the under ten and a half and plus one hundred five. <laughs> Scott's on the over. What about you, Munaf? What's your what's your next one? Uh, for my next one, it's gonna be a uh, a matchup prop here for Ooh. the draft, and it's gonna be uh, Johnny Dave. Who's gonna be drafted first, Johnny Davis or AJ Griffin? And I kind of do like Johnny Davis to be drafted. I know it, it, at first before AJ Griffin at minus one eighty five. Right now, it seems like the consensus is AJ Griffin is probably going to go at that. I believe the Knicks are picking at number twelve, uh, sorry number eleven um, in the draft, and I think that's where he's going to end up. But there are a couple of teams that do need some point guard help uh, within that first ten picks. I mean, I think right now consensus seems like Washington. Might be a spot for uh, Johnny Davis at number ten. They do need some point guard help there. They, I know, they have Bradley Beal at the shooting guard position, and they have a lot of depth at that forward position, the power forward position. But the point guard position is where they kind of really need some help. So I like Johnny Davis to get drafted uh, before AJ Griffin. I think that um, AJ Griffin could slide here a little bit as well. Um, at minus one eighty five, I'm willing to lay that price with uh, Johnny Davis. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I I'm on board. Um, makes sense to fade AJ there. Uh, what do you what do you got, uh, Kramer? Well, I mean, again, when you 
will keep going down my strategy, which is I I don't plan on watching the entire first round. <laughs> so we're gonna go right to the four pick, and, and I'll ask I'll ask I, I the, the discussion is if you if you look at the mock draft databases, et cetera, et cetera, it's mostly Ivy with a smidgen of Murray, and so I guess what is that smidgen worth? It does see if there's no movement, is isn't Ivy the pick? Asking the uh, Scott, you can go first. Well, Ivy should be the pick because I think he's the best prospect available. Now, the problem is that the Kings, of course, still kept the Aaron Fox. They still have Mitchell as a point guard there. And plus, we got to mention this is the elephant in the room. Ooh. It's the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Are they really going to do what they should be doing? <laughs> and and I hope he, I hope Jaden Ivy doesn't end up there because I think he's going to end up being the best prospect in the draft class. Uh, Scott, you were on Vison and you gave out uh Daniels to go number four, right? I I, I, I like that I as a long shot. Well, uh, I did give it out a twenty-eight to one. Ooh. It's down to twenty to one. So okay. there has been some movement towards it. I don't want to say I'm, you know, the reason why it moves. Market or mover, maybe, Scott you know, Rochelle. I don't know, mover and shaker. I don't know. People were talking. But the thing is, you really can't predict when it comes to the draft which news sources are reliable and what's either just a rumor or a smoke screen. The only thing you can confirm is which prospects worked out for which teams. And I can confirm because Daniel stated to reporters, he did work out with the Kings. So if you want to play that game and say, I'm getting a 20 plus to one guy who pretty much confirmed that the Kings had him in the building. If he had a good enough workout, there's maybe a chance he impressed the front office. And also he's a solid defensive player. They have a defensive minded head coach and Mike Brown maybe he is a good fit for the identity that Brown's trying to implement there. Now, once again, I would take Ivy if I was making the pick, but it's the Kings. And if the King, if the Kings did things that people actually thought were smart, they would have made the playoffs at some point in the last 20 years. <laughs> if you want to talk about a team that could make a long shot move to surprise some people, I think Daniels at around 20 to one, 28 to one or so is worth some value. I'm so, I'm with Scott making that my second so when, pick. Dyson when, Daniels fourth overall, 20 to one. When does Ivy go then? Well, when, when does he go or when should he go? When would he, he should in, probably in that, go top three. But in that scenario, but where does he go? You can make an argument that potentially Detroit could want to pair him with Cade if they want to go like a one, two situation there. Detroit seems pretty high on Matherin. That seems to be where all the rumors are headed. But then again, if you're high on Matherin and suddenly Ivy's available, do you pivot? I, it's a good question. I think he could potentially slide all the way to six. If you really want to talk about where Ivy could go, if you have Daniels go there as somewhat of like an atom bomb in the top 10, I don't think Ivy falls past Indiana. I think Indiana would be the last place he would fall. Once again, I think he's a top three prospect in the draft. But if we're talking about Sacramento, doing one thing to cause a chain reaction down the line. I do believe that six would be the, I'd say floor for where Ivy's going to get selected. So we just workshopped a fun bet that cause you can Ivy to be the sixth pick is 18 to one. Really? Uh, and so I guess Scott, you said you can still get 20 to one on, um, on the other side of that, which is yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw yeah, So, okay. So it's still a better bet. So never mind. Well, unless your argument is, can Ivy potentially go five to Detroit if he suddenly falls on the board? Because Detroit has been looking into Matherin because I'm sure in the back of their mind they're thinking Ivy's probably off the board. Well, Jaden Ivy, I'm seeing plus three hundred or plus two twenty five to go yeah. fifth overall. So, but I if think- you miss that and you play both sides of it, you can hit a twenty to one and an eighteen to one. Mm. Because like the, the first domino falls, all that we have to happen is Detroit to to not come off of the guy they like. Maybe it's not, you know, even though Ivy falls, maybe they still like a guy. And so I, I don't know. I feel like with these draft things, you build these fun scenarios, you can get paid out big time. I mean, I'm sure you can't parlay fourth pick and, and sixth pick, but if you could, Oh, all right. What's your, uh, do you, are you gonna, are you gonna pick one of those officially Ryan? Uh, well, I, I like the long, I like take, I'll do the Jaden Ivy six in the, in the scenario where he falls. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play that just to not, not take Scott's uh, idea, but I like the, I like the scenario because it's, it's at least likely. 
I'm I'm stealing Scott's idea. No, you're just going to take his pick. The Dyson that, Daniels you know fourth at, at twenty to one makes so much sense. Get though. back to your roots of just taking our guests. Well, picks. come on, you know it's a, it's a group thing. It's a collaborative. I'm, you've all done. You've all had a group assignment yeah. where someone does more of the work than the other guys. Yeah, it's still you still well, get the same grade. And I'll I'll lead I'll lead with another prop because okay, this is what a good you got? conversation. Over under six and a half trades. Oh, how do you not just take the over? I I, I know that's a, a lame take, but these the, the NBA saw what the NFL happened. What happened in the NFL draft? Are we worried? It though, was massive ratings, lots of <laughs> trades. Are we worried though that we've already getting a couple trades out before the draft? Yeah, Munaf, what's your take on that number of trades? You said is it during the draft or during? I think the, it's during round one of the draft. Yes, during the yeah. first round. Yeah, I like. The, I kind of do like the under because Ooh. what what Sean just mentioned is because like some of the the trades will probably happen as we kind of lead up to the first pick of the NBA draft. I mean, we already had one that went down. It wasn't for this year's draft, but I think that one that I just talked about that got leaked or talked about by Chris Haynes of Yahoo uh, with Portland trading the number seven pick possibly to Toronto. But I think those trades will probably happen before the draft. Uh, you may get a couple in there, two or three, but. From 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 my knowledge, it's usually been a very very low volume trade uh, night in the NBA draft. I mean, may you may get one blockbuster and a couple of small trades where teams want to move up, but other than that, um, to my knowledge and what I kind of remember, it's with thirty teams. You don't really see that many. Uh, you don't see that many uh, draft uh, trades. A lot of trades. What about you, Scott? Are you co-signing the under? Or are you would you lean uh, over? I'm actually looking at the over. Uh, I think that it's a spot where we're going to see a decent amount of movement. Now you mentioned what if some trades are rumored before the draft, that's fine. As long as they sign the dotted line during the draft account. Yeah. So you can talk about Ananobi being rumored to go somewhere. If they don't do anything about that until the actual draft, then you win. So it doesn't really change much the way that I see it. I'm still leaning over. It's a very deep draft with a lot of pieces that could turn into something special. So I do feel like the potential move would be to, I'd say, see teams trade up for guys that they specifically like, or there's a player that randomly falls or somebody who you think wasn't going to be available. And now they're available. I could see some teams trading up or potentially trading back if they need multiple actual pieces to make some moves. I like the over because I do think with such a deep class, uh, teams have zeroed in on the guys that they want. I'm sure they already have big boards set up, but I'm going to go and take the over. I think you'll see a lot of movement. And based on some really basic research, it does seem like the tr a lot of times the trades being reported end up happening during officially happening during the first round. At least yeah. last year, that's how it was apparently graded. So something right. to to keep in mind. Scott, what's your? Uh, I'm what's, taking the over. All right, Scott, what's the what's the next prop you like? Well, for the record, I do also have Wesley under 21 and a half. So I'm just going to get that out of the way. I know they went off mentioned it, but you know, I'm just going to say that I'll move on to the other prop that I have <laughs> though. It's going to be a plus money ploy. Uh, it's mm. going to be on Nikola Jovic, oh. not to be, conf not to be confused with Jokic, but I got him over Liddell at plus 135. Now Liddell was a very solid player at Ohio state, but I'm a little bit confused what position he's supposed to play in the pros. He's six foot seven, 240 pounds. So is, are, is he supposed to go top 20 despite being basically a power forward max or maybe even a small ball center, which you hope he can hold up defensively, but you're looking at Jovic. And one thing that we've seen pretty commonly over the last couple of years, international prospects tend to go sooner rather than later. You have some film on the guys, they have workouts and you are very interested in seeing what exactly they can do for your specific team. And I do think getting plus money for a guy who is about 6'11", he's younger, and he also has a lot of, I'd say, skills that I don't think Liddell has. I do think you could see Jovic go early. Liddell, I think, is a good player, but I really question, based on the size and stature, what exactly his role is going to be in the NBA. He might be a one-trick pony power forward. I'm going to go with Jovic at plus money. Yeah, I, uh, I I like that, and I like the logic of just the the but foreign fading, players fading a uh, under the rim Big Ten, yeah, big man, quote unquote. Well, the, I mean, it's just easier to talk yourself into the potential of these foreign players. Like, oh man, they they're looking so good, and you you can kind of like like sell yourself on the dream, the potential. 
Uh, so that makes a ton of sense. What about you, Moonoff? What's your next? Uh, what's your next prop? Yeah, uh, you guys already touched on it, uh, or uh, Scott mentioned his name. It was, it was uh, Ben Matherin. I, I do like him at the fifth overall pick. That around, I see around two to one plus two fifty. Uh, at that fifth pick, uh, he's getting a lot of steam over the past week here for the NBA draft, and um, rightfully so. I think he's going to be a great player. I, I'm not really sold on a Keegan Murray at, at fifth overall, but um, get, getting him into Detroit uh, with that fifth overall pick, uh, pairing him with Cade, I think that's going to be a good spot for um, uh, for Ben Matherin there. So I'll, I'll take him at, at plus 200. Definitely shop around. You know, there's some plus 250s out there as well for him to go fifth overall. Should he be favored in that spot? He is not favored, actually. I think it's... Uh, I'm not wondering if he should. because He should course, be. Yeah, Detroit I mean, traded for Bagley, so I don't know if they really need another big man. Yeah, and that's why I, don't, I I just don't like Keegan Murray at, uh, at that fifth spot. So that, that's why I do like Matherin at, at that two to one price at, at the mm. fifth overall pick. Dog. He's participating nice in little, our uh, in our slide logic from earlier. Uh, the guy I was going to make fun of EJ Liddell being my comp is Jared Sellinger. I was having a hard time remembering his name, but under the under the rim big man. I yeah. like fate. I, I also Ohio State. By the way, that the you, you might be able to find that matchup for plus one fifty uh, uh, in faraway places. All right, uh, we're gonna get a couple more draft props out before we do that. Shout out trade coffee. Oh mm. man, love a trade coffee morning. Just again, I get the uh, the whole the the whole beans. Get those things ground up. It is a mm. it is a delicious coffee. Uh, trades real coffee experts personally taste test over 450 rows. So they know exactly what to recommend you again. You, you sign on, you take their uh, coffee quiz, get it dialed into your exact flavor palette. And again, it just, the beans smell great. The coffee tastes delicious. They've delivered over 5 million bags of fresh coffee with more than 750,000 positive reviews. It's insane. Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order. Plus free shipping. When you go to drinktrade.com slash SGP, that's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash SGP and let trade find you a coffee. You'll love drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off. Kramer, what else you got? All right. Well, I think there's a chance my Knicks take this guy, another Kentucky player oh, okay. named Ty 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 under yep. 19 and a half. So you know, my little bit of insider. Uh, I listened to ten minutes of a Knicks podcast today, and I, I feel dirty for doing it. But sounds like there's a greater than zero uh, percent chance he could end up on the Knicks. They seem to like uh, the folks from down south there in Kentucky. So under nineteen and a half seems like good value. I almost don't want to ask if Scott likes this pick because I, I if I'm if it, if he doesn't like it, I I will Scott, instant- are you are you grading? Uh, what are you grading Ryan's pick here? I'll, I'm going to give it a B plus. Oh. You know, I think that the logic was there. He dug deep listening to Nick's podcast. So I, the research was there. Right. I know Someone Terrell, Terrell loved the under yeah. for Ty Ty. So me, we did the too. NBA uh, draft prop show a day or two ago. And one of his favorite plays was Ty Ty to go under. All right. I think it's a little bit tricky to find his exact spot because you have to try to figure out what his role is going to be. Is he just a backup point guard sixth man? Because I don't think a team's drafting him to start right away. No, I'm is that true. I, I mean, yeah, your, your, your bet is as good as mine. So I, I, I see just... two spots besides the Knicks. I see either Atlanta or Chicago. I think both of them make sense. Chicago. If they want to toss out Kobe white, I think we can admit the experiment has kind of failed with Kobe white in Chicago, Atlanta. If they want to play Trey young, a bit more off ball, I do think it makes sense for them to go to for Ty tie, but it's also the Knicks and the Knicks do questionable things. So I can understand that too. But I don't mind the under there because now, based on your research, we have three potential <laughs> landing spots before that twentieth pick. Yeah. See, look at that. I we, like it. That, uh, minus one ten, Sean. No, yeah, and and Munoff. Uh, Let's go. I got his mock draft uh, pulled up right here. He has Whoa. Atlanta taking Ty Ty Washington at number sixteen. So there's a couple different spots. He could go Atlanta at sixteen. Yeah, you could go we, Bulls we, at eighteen. We just talked about this. No, I'm just I'm reiterating. No, I know. It's you. Thank you for pointing I'm out how great my pick is. There's there's multiple outs. And I, I appreciate love, it. Yeah, I love us. Yeah. Situ- See, look at look at how defensive Ryan is. No, I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm complimenting. Thank you. I'm yes, Andy, wow. and I'm going. That's a great idea. And Ryan's like, Why are you showing? Why Why are you? Come on, don't pull back the curtain that far. <laughs> All right, here's one. Now, while not technically a draft prop, what do you mean? It is connected in the draft prop section, most likely of 
your uh, you know, uh, win bet or wh- whatever you're using. Give me Jaden Ivey, rookie of the oh. year, at five to one. I've just watched a lot of college basketball. Um, <laughs> Jaden Ivey to me is like far and above. Looks like the most pro ready out of any of these guys. I love the fact that you're getting plus five hundred. I think by the time we're talking like next March or April, he's going to be low two hundreds, one hundred. Am I am I crazy for liking Jay Ivy this much, Munaf? Uh, I don't. I think it's a bit <laughs> premature. To, it's it's a trick. It's a trick question. I yeah, think it really and I is. are on the same page. Yeah, because I, I feel like you know if you get through summer league, I mean injuries is always the biggest concern, right? With when we're taking these awards this early in the season um, or, oh. you know, in the off season. But I mean, I, I understand your logic that, you know, he's a great dynamic player. You know, he has that, that aggressiveness. He has that, um, you know, that he, he has a skill set, right? But if he ends up in Sacramento, both Scott and O, both Scott and I agree <laughs> about how, how Scott, uh, sorry, how the Kings run their organization. And we're not sure if he's going to be, you know, April, you know, I guess uh, showcase his talent uh, under Mike Brown as the head coach of the Sacramento Kings, if he does end up there. But um, I mean, if, if you're getting good value on it at five to one, I mean, sure. Why not? I mean, don't oh. put like a significant amount of money. Maybe a pizza I money. already put he, significant amount he of money. So, on he was oh, so, he was so confident. <laughs> he was, he was, uh, put- come on. I no. to their point. I'll wait till he okay. gets drafted, but I, I'm not going to have to worry about it because Dyson Daniels is going to be going forth to the Sacramento Kings. Mm. Then I'm going to use those winnings to bet on the Jaden Ivey rookie of the year. So that's I already not, got a, it's already a got a whole plan. scheme uh, plan. Mm. Well, when, when the Rockets draft ben, uh, Bankero at number three, he's going to be rookie of the year. Sorry. Oh, I, okay. So now, now no, we've gotten no, to the heart of the issue. The <laughs> I, I, Scott, what's your what's your next uh, draft prop? Well, first of all, just to backtrack for a second on your rookie of the year bet. My question for you is: Do you think the lines would actually shift depending on where Ivy goes? That, that's that's a great question because to your point, if he does go to the Kings, which he is the odds-on favorite right now to go to the Kings, you would part of me would think it's already factored in, but then part of me would just see a player on the Kings not want to bet him, and maybe the odds would go higher, right? Am I am I reading that right? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Or worst case is it would stay the same. Yeah. I'm also not thrilled about taking him to win rookie of the year on the Kings because I'm assuming their offense is going to be entirely Fox a bonus pick and roll. So I'm kind of figuring out what role he's going to have trying to be an off all guard, which is kind of what Halliburton tried to do. And it was a little bit iffy at times. And I feel like they should have let Halliburton do more, for example. But the way that I see it for rookie of the year, I can understand the angle there. I would probably lean to either the first overall pick in Jabari Smith or the third overall pick in Boncaro. I think we agree that home green is a project at best who could turn into a good player, but we're going to have to wait and see how that works itself out. That's kind of where I'm looking. Uh, I think that it makes sense, but I'm personally going to pass. Yeah. I, I just wish there was a uh, Chet Holmgren will not win NBA rookie <laughs> of the year will not be a good <laughs> NBA player. Like who? we gotta, we gotta figure out some sort of bets we can just get on fading Chet. He's plus four seventy five to win rookie of the year. Like Chet? Who, who, yeah. Who's betting that? Well, his dad, I mean, his dad's obviously a huge fan. The guy's at every, every game with the, Got with the, the cam quarter that is yeah. completely unaware of either a cam coach's quarter. tape. YouTube or uh, cell phone. So classic. By the, old man. by the way, one, one more point to make Sean feel a little bit better. One Thank thing you. that I discovered myself is that everything is a pizza bet. It depends how much pizza you order. <laughs> exactly. There you go. That's there a go. good angle. And what, what, what great, you know, what level of pizza shout out to uh, Anthony Gutierrez in the YouTube chat as a Kings fan. I hate my life. Uh, thank oh, you sorry, for checking bro. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being realistic, you know. Like I'm sure he can comment in the YouTube's, uh, you know, comment section. He probably wants Ivy, but ask him if he would be surprised if the Kings somehow took a long shot candidate. I think he would not be surprised. Let's put it that way. No, they they definitely seem like a le- you know a lock for doing something cute off the board uh, that inevitably would anger their fan base and a uh, Cap Quest as well in the YouTube chat. He's claiming that Jay Billis said Chet is little Giannis, which is what? is insane. No one uh, said that. No, no if, one. If we call, that. if we end up calling 
a Chet Holmgren like the uh, <laughs> I don't, what would his version like the pale freak? Well, I don't know what we would the call. Pale freak. I don't know what we would call him <laughs> to compare him to the Greek freak. I realize it doesn't rhyme, but there's no way <laughs> J- Chet is gonna have. I again, me, I just don't understand his game, and uh, I feel bad for killing He's him. Tall. I just. I guess he maybe can shoot. He yeah, can play he's a, a tall deep. man. Who he's can gonna shoot. get. Imagine him trying to guard Shaq. A, insert any. Shaq. Insert any <laughs> large athletic big man in the NBA. Giannis. Imagine Embiid. him. Embiid. Embiid. Yeah. <laughs> Embiid. Imagine you're Joel Embiid and you have Chet like just posting up in the paint, waiting for you to back him down. I. I mean, come uh, on. I'm it, not gonna call him a boss, but if you want to talk about comparisons. He's a little bit similar to Sean Bradley. If you want to talk about Bill. Yeah, that's a great call. He, he, now he's of course more athletic. He can shoot. Bradley couldn't do those things. If you're talking about a skinny center who probably needs to gain 40 something pounds, give or take. Yeah. I do think Bradley is a more fair comparison than Giannis, especially <laughs> since Holmgren's entering the draft several inches taller than Giannis uh, because Giannis had a growth spurt in like a second year in the link. I'm going to early fair comparison. I've been u- saving this one for many years, but I'm going to go with a Robert Swift comparison. Ooh. Uh, oh. if, for those oh, who remember, God. he was a long frame ginger on the Seattle Supersonics. <laughs> Seven foot one, just delicious length. Turned out to be nothing. Delicious. Would length. love to know what he's up to today. All right. I was uh, more of a straw mile Swift guy personally. <laughs> he was the uh, 12th pick in the 2004 draft. You want my next one, Sean? Uh, sure. How many? How many more do you have? Left? I don't know. I can keep going. Well, I, I think. Uh, why don't we close it out with like a lock? Okay. Locks, of course, brought to you by IP Vanish. You want to lock up your internet security? You got to do with IP Vanish. You don't want those prying eyes getting in there. The ISPs, the hackers, the advertisers, and uh, perfect to use for your uh, streaming device as well. Like a Fire Stick, you can hide your location. You can use it on unlimited devices. Will not slow you down. And they're offering seventy percent off their yearly plan. Just go to ipvanish.com/sgp to claim your seventy percent savings. ipvanish.com/sgp and a thirty-day money-back guarantee. Scott, we'll kick it off. Let's uh, let's go around the room here. Give out our uh, our lock or or something else that we haven't given out so far to close out the NBA draft props. Well, I'm going to give out something we have not given out yet, but it does kind of overlap with one of Munaf's props. He had Johnny Davis over AJ Griffin. I'm just going to take Davis to be a top 10 pick and him under 10 and a half is around minus one. I believe it's 165 now, give or take. And I think he's going to be a top 10 pick. There's been rumors about him potentially going to Washington at the 10th pick, which I can see, but Davis has a lot of offensive talent that he was not really able to showcase at Wisconsin because they only play in the half court, but Davis can get to the rim. He can shoot pretty well. He got better at it over the course of his college career, but I see him being a top 10 pick. You might have to sweat it out for a pick or two, but I can see San Antonio maybe taking him at nine because he's a pretty high IQ player and he does get to the basket and he's also a pretty good defender. And I do also think that Washington should take him at 10 worst case scenario. I'm going Johnny Davis under 10 and a half. Um, Now, what do you, I, I I've seen Johnny Davis under nine and a half at plus two hundred. Do you think it's worth uh, taking that? We're getting a little uh, better better number on it. I would say probably not because I do think Washington is going to be the fail safe there. Okay, at the tenth pick. We already talked about Duran potentially going to the Spurs, which is possible. Don't get me wrong, but I do think <laughs> that Duran's probably the more likely choice there. Yeah. So as a result, I'm going to go ahead. And lean with the ten and a half instead of the nine and a half. Yeah, I like it. And and uh, Scott obviously went to Wisconsin, Badger Insider, so probably has a couple of oh. b- bit of nuggets there as well. Moon off, close it out. What do you got for a lock? Best bet? Something we haven't gotten to for the yeah. NBA draft. I'm gonna just go with the first one that I gave out. I feel really confident about it. Blake Wesley under twenty one and a half uh, draft position. Um, <laughs> It just makes a lot of sense, especially in that area about that 18 to around 20 range. As Scott mentioned, Spurs, uh, he can end up there at the 20th pick. Uh, Minnesota makes a lot of sense. Chicago as well. Those guys, those teams uh, need guard help uh, in the second unit of their teams. And, you know, Blake West is a guy that can create his own shot. Uh, he can collapse the defense. He does need to work on his defense a little bit. But, um, you know, being in Chicago with guys like Lonzo Ball, AC, that can help him with defense. Minnesota, Pat Beverly. 
Spurs, um, you know, defense wasn't great that last year, but, you know, they're going to improve in that area as well. So I think that he, he could go in that range. So at 21 and a half, I, I love it here. Give me the under 21 and a half. Uh, if you don't hear from me, I'm probably, if he does get drafted, top 20, I probably made another trip over to Switzerland for the Ooh, <laughs> Very nice, Moon off. What do you got, Kramer? All right. So the parlay, uh, I've now confirmed in two far away places. Plus 105 seems to be the going Ooh. price for that trifecta. Uh, and for my, I'll give you something fun uh, because I told you the Knicks, the reason I took the under uh, tie tie 19 and a half is because the Knicks were going to pull the trigger. Tie tie to go to the Knicks, 15 to 1, Sean. Ooh. Let's lock that up. Or make that my dog or whatever, whatever label you want to <laughs> place on it. I don't do labels anymore, Sean. Yeah, I like it. You're you are a uh, I'm label free. You're a you're a label free society <laughs> or a label free, I don't know, however you want to say My it. pronoun is real money <laughs> from now on. <laughs> Your pronoun is real. All right. Uh man. What I, what's going on over there? Sean? No, I'm trying to Playing find some blackjack. No, I'm trying to find the uh <laughs> got some leftover funds from the uh the, the blackjack live stream. Hashtag Dejans only. We have like, hey Sean, you gonna send? Where, where are those credits, huh? I like uh, Jeremy Socan under. Am I pronouncing his name right? Socan under twelve and a half. I'm trying to see if I can find a better price than minus two hundred. But uh, you know, Moonoff's got him going to the Thunder. I just don't think he gets past he, them. He's another fun one to the Knicks. He's a very Knicks pick. Uh, yeah, another that's what guy. I'm saying. He's I think 10, he could go eleven. He's ten to one to the Knicks. Really? So I I think Wizards could take him. I think the Knicks could take him. I think the Thunder could take him. So I love him at under He's Polish. Of course he'll go to the Knicks. Under 12 and a half. I'm seeing minus 200. I I was seeing a better price before. So mm. shop around there. Uh maybe you can find a uh a these, little bit more These draft number. props are like horse races. The as you get closer to post, like the follow the money. This it's, is it's yeah, all real. This is probably the best yeah. time to be betting cuz I feel like we're already seeing a little bit of a action, a little bit yeah. of steam. Going, uh, going to what the eventual winners would be as this stuff leaks out. Jabari Smith finishes what? Mine off the board minus eight hundred. Yeah, when do they I, pull it off? The if you're listening to this on Thursday morning, you should be well. Hey, should be subscribed to our YouTube channel. Turn those notifications yeah. on because you probably already already missed the window on uh, the trifecta and certainly probably. I bet when we wake to up tomorrow on the West Coast, it'll already be like minus five hundred. Yeah, right? let's get a year I, of tuition yeah. locked away. Yeah, exactly. Right? Nice Ryan's gonna Ryan's gonna be you know sending his kids to like oh you better better consider law school I got a lot of tuition to uh, yeah. to unload yeah I can't on spend education. it on anything but educational expenditures <laughs> expenditures yeah you got to get in one of those uh, what are the, what are those special funds only for your child's education uh, tax free uh, there's actually ways to get it out it's kind of oh. interesting yeah you can you know talk to a guy about a guy we got we got to uh, work some schemes up. All right, thanks to Scott and Muna for coming on. Make sure you follow Scott at Rochelle Radio on Twitter. Check out all the shows he does for the network. He's on WNBA, Gambling Podcast, bunch of other shows, edits pods, fills in all over the place, and uh, yeah, popping up on Vsin. It's all over the place. Follow him at Rochelle Radio, and of course, follow Muna oh. on Twitter as well at Sports Nerd Eight Two Four. MLB gambling podcast, prop cast. Got some more coming up this fall. I'm getting tired. He listening. is the machine. And uh, as always, uh, make sure you uh, drop a nice rating review on Apple Podcasts. Take a screenshot of your review, submit it on the contest tab in the SGPN app for your chance to win free gear every Monday, aka March Monday. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. For those who missed it, Sean did put Rob Gronkowski in his top 10 fantasy <laughs> tight ends. I'm sticking to it. Kramer, let it ride.